everybody, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm here today to bring you my favourite kind of vlog, which is what I've been making. So I'll run through, give you a bit of a twirl, talk to you about any tips and techniques that I use during the making. All of the fabrics and the patterns I mention are available on our site and the link to our site's below. And then I will blog about these items in due course as well, so you can get into the real nitty gritty in the blog posts and the link to our blog is also below. So the first thing I want to say is that recently I've had very, very little time for sewing and that's because I'm doing a really boring, long-winded decorating project at home that I won't go into, but it has been, it feels like the equivalent of painting the Sistine Chapel to be quite honest, it's gone on and on and on. So what I've had to do is accept that I'm not gonna be able to make um, more complicated things or work on projects that take a lot of time. Instead, I've had to focus on quick turnaround projects, but what I've done, tried to do is be a little bit inventive with that and work with maybe fabrics that I haven't worked with before so that I'm still learning and I'm still developing new techniques. Um, or I've also tried out some different styles to what I would normally make as well. So although they've been sort of quick wins, quick turnarounds, um, I still feel like I'm learning, I still feel like I'm being challenged, I still feel like I'm doing something different. And actually, I've got to say, I've really rather enjoyed it because it has been nice being able to churn things out a little bit more quickly than I usually would because sometimes some of my projects can go on and on because I get a bit meticulous about the fit and things. So anyway, that just gives you a bit of background. I've got three makes to show you today. And the first one is this leather look skirt, which I'm absolutely thrilled with. Um, you can see on the back there, I added an exposed zip. Um, and this is our leatherette fabric, which has got like an embossed print on it, which I'm sure you can see. Um, and I just absolutely love it. I'm wearing it with my birder blouse that I made in our crepe de chine. Um, I wear it with bare legs. I'm just, they're a bit white at the moment. So excuse, excuse uh, me if I've just blinded you with my very white legs. Um, but yeah, the plan is really to wear this with um, bare legs and strappy sandals, probably put a bit of fake tan on my legs before I actually ventured out in public in it. Um, but I just think it's a really nice sort of, it feels very chic, it feels very modern, it feels very fashionable, it's super comfortable. Um, the other thing I plan to do with this as well is wear it with um, a jumper and tights and boots. I think you can kind of dress it down for daytime wear. I've seen people wearing them with trainers or sneakers as well and like a nice t-shirt, like a baggy sort of loose fit t-shirt. I think that look could work quite well. Um, so yeah, I think it was Portia Laurie who referred to it as a wardrobe workhorse on my Instagram feed recently. So thanks for that Portia. I think you hit the nail right on the head there. Um, the pattern I used to make this skirt was McCall's 3830. So this is an old favourite of mine. I've used it, I think, two or three times. I think I'm about to use it again, to be honest, because it is just a super simple um, straight skirt. There's no waistband. Um, there's darts at the front, darts at the back, and um, you're supposed to use a normal skirt zip, I think. But as I mentioned, I chose to use the um, an exposed zip instead. And that's just a metal teeth trouser zip. Um, there is a tutorial on our blog for how I did that. And I want to get that updated with another little technique that I've learned recently, um, which is to, if you baste where you plan to um, position your, where your stitching lines will be once you've inserted the zip, that can act as a good guide. And when you snip um, at the end of the, you have to snip the fabric into like a triangle so that you're able to fold it down and, and have the exposed zip. And those basting lines just give you a bit of a guide as to where to snip to, so that's quite useful. So I think I'm gonna add that into the blog post that already exists on our blog. But in the meantime, have a look at the one that already exists because the thing I'll say about an exposed zip is, it's not as complicated as it looks. It's not as complicated as you think. It's actually really quite easy to do. Um, so back to the skirt, it, the size I made was a 12. Um, it comes in sizes six to 22. So there's three different um, size groupings you have to select um, on our website. Uh, size six is a 23 inch waist and the size 22 is a 37 inch waist. 
the size 6 is a 32 and a half inch hip and the size 22 is a 46 inch hip so just so you've got an idea of the range of sizes this pattern's available in um, and yeah it's just got no waistband it's just got facings um, to finish it at the waist it comes in five lengths as well and I just think it's a really fantastic go-to pattern if you want to make something quick and easy and simple um, and it was ideal for my first time working with this leather look fabric because obviously it's quite different to anything I've worked with before so um, it was nice to make something that was simple straightforward minimal fuss and detail um, that I knew was easy to fit as well um, a few tips about working with the leather look fabric I used leather needles um, one really excellent tip that I learned was when I sewed the darts on the skirt I noticed you can't really press leather look fabric so I noticed the darts were just looking really bulky they weren't lying flat you know I wasn't really sure what to do about it and then I thought actually I could slash the dart so um, if you haven't heard of this tip with bulky fabrics what you can do is just slash down the middle um, of the seam allowance on the dart um, as you know sort of down to say a quarter of an inch before you get to the end of the dart and then you can if you are if you've got a fabric that you can press you can press it open and that just reduces that bulk now obviously with the leather look fabric I, I slashed it and then I thought well what am I going to do and then I read a fantastic tip which was to top stitch down the side of each dart so I'll just try and show you that I'm not sure if that's visible to you there um, that's probably about visible but yeah um, so I did that and then I realized the same with the zip at the back I thought oh you know it's not sitting very flat what am I going to do I can't press it so I just top stitched down the sides of the zip as well and it worked beautifully it worked brilliantly and it was one of those things that as soon as you do it, you think oh yes of course that's what you see on ready to made wear um, garments all the time so that was a great tip um, the other one was to glue the seam allowances down and I also glued the hem up as well rather than stitching it I didn't want the stitching visible on the hem um, so I just used like a fabric glue and I used one of those little roller things that um, people use when they're wallpapering. I had to borrow it off my dad. Hi dad if you're watching. Um, thanks for lending me decorating tools. Um, but it's like a little tiny roller and people used to use them or do use them just to roll the um, over the edges of the wallpaper to get those lying nice and flat. And I used one of those. Um, and then other than that really... Um, I, you can use a Teflon foot if you need to and I found that I didn't need to because the other side of this leatherette fabric is actually like almost like a fleecy sort of feel and because I was always sewing right sides together I didn't actually need to use the Teflon foot but if you are going to be sewing across the leather surface itself then a Teflon or non-stick foot is really useful and we stock a wide range of those for sewing machines on our site. Um, so I think that's everything I want to say about this one but yes I just I'm feeling very smug about this one I'm really for such a quick easy project I got loads out of it I learned loads of new techniques and I feel like it's something I will want to wear over and over again I think it'll be in my wardrobe for years to come so that's definitely a winner for me so the next two makes I want to show you are this Rowan t-shirt which is by Megan Nielsen first time I've made a Megan Nielsen pattern I was really impressed it was lovely to make and this Simplicity um, 1200 circle skirt. Um, so I'm trying desperately, I might just be a little bit naughty here and uh, ditch health and safety rules and just show you that there. You can see it's very, very swishy, um, very different style to what I would normally wear. Um, so like I said earlier, you know, I haven't had much time to make things and so I've tried to mix it up a bit by making different things um, and this skirt is one of those things. So it's Simplicity 1200. It's in our crepe dark floral fabric. This fabric is the most beautiful, beautiful quality. Um, it's like a triple crepe, I would say. It's like quite a, got a lot of um, body and... Um, you know it's it's probably like a medium weight I would describe it as so perfect for a big swishy skirt like this I just absolutely love it um, and yeah this is available on the site as is the pattern as is everything I mentioned today um, in terms of the pattern it comes in sizes 
um, that range from, let's have a look, I'm just looking at the instructions now, sorry, um, body measurements, it comes from, it starts at a 23 inch waist and it goes up to a 37 inch waist. Um, and the hip goes from a 32 and a half inch to a 46 inch um, hip. So that just gives you an idea of sizes. There's two, three, four, five. There's six different views. So there's options with um, different lengths and overlays as well. And it is just your straightforward bog standard simple circle skirt pattern. So really you can make it in an evening, which is great. Um, I decided to make it in this lovely floral fabric and I plan to wear this with um, ankle boots and flesh coloured tights and then I've also got, um, I thought I'd wear my denim jacket over this and I thought it'd be a really nice transitional spring wardrobe look so you know it's not too summery and um cold you know it'd still keep me quite warm with the flesh coloured tights um the but denim jacket will brighten it up a little bit um and the ankle boots will just bring that modern edge to it um because it's quite a traditional sort of circle skirt pattern um i had a bit of a mishap cutting the waistband because um basically i just didn't i didn't allow myself enough fabric so i just created um a side seam on the waistband and matched that up with the side seam on the skirt so that looks absolutely fine i'm very happy with that super easy to fit um literally all you've got to do is make a waistband make the skirt um i did a narrow hem on the skirt by overlocking the edge and then just pressing it up um, and what I found was that I knocked my differential feed up on my overlocker a notch or two just to sort of gather the edge of the skirting so that when I pressed it up um, it was this, it would press up nicely um, because obviously the the edge of your skirt is the raw edge is going to be longer than um, what you're trying to press it up to in a circle skirt so that was a really good tip I got off Angela was just to gather use the overlocker to just gather the edge slightly and then it pressed up better and then I just top stitched it down actually no I'd stitched from the wrong side actually because I was able to see exactly where I was stitching then I think I did that um, and anyway I'm really pleased with the hem it looks lovely and neat um, and I'm just really pleased that I tried a different style as well because I think I will wear this absolutely loads I mean it's not quite warm enough here we're still feeling pretty Baltic here in the UK at the moment but when things do warm up I just think it's a nice spring floral lovely feminine skirt to wear so i'm really pleased with this highly recommend the pattern highly recommend the fabric it's beautiful and i don't think there's much else to say about it really so on to the megan nielsen rowan t-shirt i'm incredibly pleased with this again this is definitely another wardrobe workhorse in the net words of portia laurie um super quick and easy to make um I think it took me in total maybe like two or three hours. I mean, you could probably do it quicker than that. I'm not a particularly quick sewer, but um, yeah, it all came together really well. It was a dead simple pattern again. I made the entire thing on my overlocker and used my cover stitch machine to cover stitch the hems, which was great. Um, I chose the crew neck version, um, but there's also turtleneck versions, v-neck versions, there's short sleeves, long sleeves, there's a bodysuit version and t-shirt version. I made the t-shirt version because I'm not a massive fan of bodysuits, I just have bad memories of being about 11 back in the 90s, kind of having a bodysuit cutting into my groin, it not being particularly comfortable, a bit scarred by that I think, but um, obviously if you're making your own I guess you, you, it won't be like that, you can make it to fit you. So. Um, yeah, that option's there as well. The measurements start from an extra small, which is a 34 inch bust, and go up to an extra large, which is a 42 inch bust. And the um, waist goes from a 26 to a 34. I made a straight size small because although my bust is probably more like a 34, um, and the small is a 36, I just thought that 
the 34 I do have problems sometimes with the armholes being a bit snug and I thought the 34 probably would be too snug and I'm glad I made that decision because the small even the small probably is just a little bit snug if I made this again I probably would try and um, drop those armholes a bit um, but you know that is being nitpicky generally this feels super comfortable um, I haven't got like the horrendous drag lines that I often get um, I did make a forward shoulder adjustment of about half half an inch just to get the seams it nicely centered um, and I did do a high round back adjustment of about half an inch as well and you know I just did that off the cuff I didn't do a twirl or anything and that worked out really well um, the fabric I used is our ritual fabric and I know it's black so it's probably not that exciting you know and I know people like bright colors but sometimes you just need those staple items in your wardrobe, don't you? And I, but I haven't got a black t-shirt, how ridiculous is that? Um, and so I made this one, I think it will get loads and loads of wear. Um, and also, I just want to say this fabric, oh my goodness me, it is amazing. It comes in a wide range of colours. It's a John Calder, so it washes and wears beautifully. I've used it before to line jerseys and things like that, and it just absolutely, the quality is amazing. Um, it's got like a very slight sheen on one side and then it's more matte on the other side so I chose this side with the slight sheen for the right side um, and it's just it's just beautiful I just don't know how else to describe it to you it feels lovely against the skin as I say it comes in I don't know how many colours I bet it's getting on for 20 colours so there really is something for everybody and if you haven't tried it give it a go it's a very stretchy um, jersey um, which is necessary for this pattern because obviously this pattern is an incredibly fitted pattern it's a very very close fit um, but yeah this fabric was absolutely ideal for it and I think I'll be making lots more of the Rowan t-shirt I think I might do a scoop neck at some point or do some variations my own variations with the neckline because once you know that the basic body fits well you know you can have a play around with that can't you um, so yeah, so that's it from me. I've got lots of other projects lined up, lots of ideas about spring makes. I think there's going to be a few more quick turnaround ones probably um, before I can get my teeth into something a bit more challenging. Um, but as I say, fully enjoying embracing, you know, the different fabrics, the different styles just to try and keep things interesting and exciting. So thanks for listening today everybody. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the links to our website where you can find everything I've mentioned today is below. The link to our blog's also below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.